Hello, friends, and welcome to a fabulous lesson that will really take you around in your understanding of circles. We're going to be finding out circumference today and exploring the reasoning behind, well, how we find that circumference. So, take a peek. I know, it's not a circle. It's a triangle, right? But I bet you know how to find the perimeter of a triangle. We just need to measure each side, add those sides up, and we've got that distance around this triangle. You might even know what to do with this one right here. A fantastic quadrilateral, but the same thing. We're going to just measure each side, and then we have the distance around that perimeter. You might even know what to do with something as crazy as this polygon here, a pentagon. Yeah, it's the same thing. We're just going to measure each side. But what if you meant one of these? A circle. That's going to be a bit different. Uh, where do you even start to measure this thing? Thing. Yikes. Well, we're going to explore today what maybe our ancient ancestors sort of figured out when they had the same problem. How do we find the distance around a circle? It's quite difficult, but you can do this at home as an experiment if you like. Uh, what you'll need is a circle of some type and possibly one that you're not going to be able to uh, miss if it gets a mark on it. But we'll also talk about that in a moment. You'll need a piece of paper, and dark paper works very well. Also, some chalk. And that's sort of what I was hinting at when I said, you know, want to be careful with the circle you grab, because depending on what it is, it might be something valuable. You don't want to mark it up with something permanent. Um, with mine, I'm also going to bring a white colored pencil into this lesson, because it works very well on the black paper, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, the other thing you're going to need is a ruler. It's pretty cool having a straight edge available. So take your ruler and go ahead and make a line across your paper. It doesn't really matter how long it is, but probably about as long as the paper. And there's our nice line there. Check it out. Now what I'm going to do is put a mark on this circle with chalk. That way I can see it, but also uh, I'm not going to damage it. Because look, it can wipe off, and I can put another one on there in just a matter of moments. Check that out. Okay, now I'm also going to put a mark on this line right there, and I'm going to line up these marks. Now, I'm going to switch over to another camera in a moment, because I really need your help with this next part. I'm going to start rolling this along, and what I want you to do is pay attention to that little point of chalk I put on there. Let me know when it hits this line again. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, look at that mark. Just let me know when it's touching again. There it goes. Oh, was that? Is it stopped? Oh, okay. And I'm going to put a mark right where it touched again. Fantastic. Thank you so much for helping me out with that one. Now I can take my ruler and uh, if I measure from that little mark I made to the mark we just made together, I should be able to find out the circumference of the circle. All right, let's see. And I can do that both in inches and in centimeters. Uh, maybe I'll choose which one looks a little bit easier. Let's see. Ooh, that's a pretty nice number right there, 25 and a half centimeters. I'm going to record that down, 25 and a half centimeters. Well, that was pretty easy, right? But what, did, what would we do if we couldn't do that? I mean, imagine a really big circle. Yeah, this would be a little bit hard to do, like a monster truck tire or maybe the biggest dinner plate in the world. You wouldn't want to do that. Plus, folks might get angry at you if you're touching things like the biggest dinner plate in the world. So we got to find another way to look at this. And I'm going to bring my circle back in here. Now, we got to also remember some of the parts of the circle because those are going to come in very interesting. So do you remember what that point from the center of the circle to the outside is called? Yeah, the radius. What about if it goes all the way from one point 
what if it goes all the way through one point to the other side of the circle? What if it goes all the way through the center point to the other side of the circle? That's right, the diameter. It's going to come in very interesting. And of course, we're looking for the circumference. I'm going to put my circle right next to that little mark that I first made, and I'm going to trace it. And again, if you have an object of value, be very careful doing this. You're welcome to use the chalk to make this, uh, you know, so it doesn't mark your beautiful object. I just fit one circle in there, making sure that the line is lined up with my diameter. So going through that center point, as best as I can, I'm then going to trace it again. I'm going to try to fill up this line with as many circles as I can. So there's two so far. And now I think I should be able to fit a third, lining up that line through the diameter of my circle, and then Much easier the third time. There we go, and uh, no, I cannot fit it anymore. What do you see? How many times did it fit? One, two, three, and a little bit more, right? That three and a little bit more is going to be very important for us. But what do we notice? We, you know, we lined up our circle, so the diameter is going right through and lined up with that line. And how many diameters did we just create there? One, two, three, and a little bit more. Three and just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to introduce a symbol to you, and it looks like this. Pretty cool, right? It's a delicious symbol known as pie. No, not that stuff with apples and cherries in it. This is a different kind of pie. It's written like this. It's actually a Greek character. It's pretty cool. And very often we say that pi is equal to 3.14. And there's a lot of digits that come after that. But for now, simply we can use that number to help us. So let's take a closer look at all of this. Pi is equal to 3.14, three times and a little bit more than what? Our diameter, isn't that cool? So we could say that circumference is equal to pi times our diameter. will make the D represent diameter. And really, we could write this even more simply as C equals pi times D. And using that equation, we should be able to find the circumference of any circle. Now, we wrote down 25 and a half centimeters for this one. Well, let's see if we were right. I'm going to take my ruler and the best I can find the diameter for this circle. It does seem to be eight centimeters. Check that out. Okay, so let's rewrite our formula and let's solve this out. I'm going to do it right in this upper corner here. Circumference equals pi times diameter. Circumference equals, okay, 3.14 and that's multiplied by, do you remember that diameter? Eight. Ooh, can you give me that circumference? Hmm. Okay, we got a 2 in there, and I'm going to carry the 1 over to the next, and look at that, 25.12, and what were we measuring by? That's right, centimeters. All right, well, that might mean that we actually have a more accurate measurement now than we even were able to draw out here. The circumference of this circle, if we could walk around it, we would walk 25 and 12 hundredths of a centimeter. How cool is that? Well, you can try that on almost anything. In fact, I could do that with the bowl I welcomed you with. Or even my pencil jar. Or, hey, I've got something else up here. Ooh, this glue stick has some circles even in that cap up there. Check that out. Circles are everywhere. 
And so I hope you can go find a couple, maybe even some really big ones, to measure their circumference of. Whatever circles you find in your environment to measure, I hope you have a fantastically full circle adventure. Have fun!